Alright, before we get started, there's a few things I want to take note of. First of all, this guide is marked as NA because if you are in a different server, the raid culture there might be different. Secondly, I don't read the story or have a good understanding of the Elseworld lore. I refer to the boss that appears in each phase as birth. And finally, this guide is for normal 15.6, story mode differs slightly. Also, there's some things I want to mention that I think you should be aware of before you enter 15.6. So the first thing is party composition. Your party composition can vary dramatically depending on many variables. Please keep in mind that the party guideline I'm about to give is extremely basic and is easily subject to change depending on your situation. A party composition like this should give you an 8 to 15 minute 15 6 clear. The first thing you want is 2 to 3 DPS, generally that's 5 to 6 mil CP. If you have 2 DPS, they should generally be doing 15 to 20 billion a minute in 15.6. If you have 3 DPS, they should generally be doing 8 to 10 billion a minute in 15.6. The DPS in your party generally should be the same type as well, meaning that they are all physical DPS or all magical DPS. The second thing you want in your party is a Celestia. The third thing you want in your party is a healer, so that's either Radiant Soul, Nyx Pieta, Blue Hen, or Ada's upcoming fourth path. Radiant Soul is generally the weakest, MP is generally preferred for physical parties, Blue Head and Ada's fourth path are generally preferred for magical parties. And finally, you want one to two additional support classes that could be LA, Revenant, CE, TB, PO, another healer, etc. Revenant is preferred for physical parties, TB for physical parties only, PO generally for magical parties only. One thing to be aware of is that all classes in Elsword can provide support to some extent. The ones mentioned here I generally consider the top tier support classes for birth raid. If your party can allow it, you can take less optimal support classes. For example, classes like IN, Scent, NI, etc. provide support. If the IN, Scent, or NI can deal DPS as well as provide support, that can make up for their less optimal supporting abilities. If your DPS is insanely strong, you can also get by with less optimal support classes as well. And some other things you need to be aware of besides of party composition are the following. One person in your party should have 4 out of 4 Sage Rigomor armor or a supportive Tenebris armor set. Generally, that's the healer or the Celestia in your party. You also want one person in your party to run a speed bottom or a speed shoes. Generally, the healer or the Celestia in your party, and these two don't stack. A speed bottom is an Elvia node bottom piece that has party's action speed. Speed shoes are Tenebris shoes that have party's action speed. At least one person in your party should be writing the synergy Broken Seal of Time, most commonly referred to as SOT. If you have an MP in your party or an MP in your party, you can choose not to have anyone run that BSOT synergy. You want to dedicate one person to be the freezer. They do not need to have a freezing skill. Being a freezer can simply mean you are the one throwing a water orb. You also want to make sure someone is carrying wind orbs to be thrown. And this is optional, but you can make sure someone is carrying dark orbs to be thrown. You only need to do this if your party is lacking enough damage reduction, etc. to survive the laser attacks in 15-6 phase 3. If you are running with an Oz, do not use dark orbs. Her debuff is stronger and will be overwritten by a dark orb. The Celestia in your party generally should host. That means that they need to be by themselves and invite the first person to the party. They can either pass the party leader to that person, they invite and have that person invite everyone else, or they can invite the rest of the party. If the Celestia leaves a party, make sure to reform the party so the Celestia gets host again. And finally, you want one person to be grabbing the black cages during Birth's ultimate attack in 15-6 phase 3. Generally, the healer is expected to do this, so people don't talk about this role as much. Alright, and with all of that out of the way, let's finally get started on the actual mechanics. Alright, firstly I want to talk about 15-6 Phase 1. For 15-6 Phase 1, you want to leave Headhunter on for the whole phase. If applicable, put Code of Honor on for over 150 bars of HP and switch to Engine Cooling System for under 150 bars of HP. The boss is debuffable for most of the phase when he is not in hyper armor. In other words, you can toss wind orbs throughout the phase. The first thing I want to talk about are skill bands. All skills in Elsword have a skill tier. Active, aka flexibility, tenacity, strength, bravery, hyperactive, wedding skill, and masterclass. In 15-6 Phase 1, Birth will ban different skill tiers. When he is above 150 bars of HP, he will ban one skill tier at a time. He cannot ban Bravery when he is above 150 bars of HP. 
After 150 bars of HP, he will ban two skill tiers at a time. When Birth bans skill tiers, he will rise up and howl. The color of the howl determines which skill tiers are banned. Blue is tenacity, purple is strength, and orange is bravery. Once he bans skills, there is no way to tell what skill tiers are banned, so it's important to make sure you take note of which skill tiers are banned. If you're in a voice call, people can call it out. If you're not in a voice call, people generally type in chat the bans. One is for tenacity ban, two is for strength ban, three is for bravery ban. If you are not sure what the bans are, ask in chat or in the voice call to make sure before pressing special active skills. If you press a ban skill, Birth will howl and kill the whole party, so don't press ban skills. If you survive the attack through Broken Seal of Time, etc., you will get a silence debuff for 8 seconds. This debuff can be removed by debuff removal skills like Celestia's Zodiac, etc. When skills are banned, Birth will have a blue aura around him. He will emit white crystal-like objects. When skills are no longer banned, this aura will disappear. Players normally will call this out in voice call when he's clear. If you aren't in a voice call, people normally type C in the chat and or press F5. When birth is clear, you can use any skills again until he bans skills again. As a reminder, while they generally won't do much damage, actives, hyperactives, and masterclass skills are always safe to use during skill bans because they can never be banned. Though generally people resort to not using these skills even when they are the only option. This is mainly because they don't do a lot of damage and you generally don't want to be stuck in skill animation in the case he does an attack like the laser attack that will be mentioned later that will leave you unable to dodge. And the next attack I want to talk about is the spike attack. Birth has various attacks during this phase, but generally if you have a properly built character and or your party composition is good, the only attack you really need to worry about dodging is the spike attack. Birth will rise slowly upwards, be in hyper armor, he will be outlined in purple, and circles will appear to show where the spikes will come up. Make sure you move out of the way. These cannot be iframed. The next attack I want to talk about is the laser attack. When Birth uses the laser attack, he will rise off the ground and blue energy will gather at his mouth. The direction he is facing is the direction he will fire the laser. Make sure you move to the other side of him. If you can get high into the air and stay there, you can stay above the attack. After Birth does a laser attack, he might turn around and laser again, so be prepared to move again if needed. It is very rare, but Birth can do up to 4 lasers in a row. Generally, during laser attacks, it's a good chance to use Guardian of Elrianode again and or swap from Code of Honor to Engine Cooling System, etc. if applicable. You can attack him during the lasers, but your damage is greatly reduced. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about for this phase is freezing. It is extremely important to freeze in this phase. There are two types of freezes, the OG freeze and the KR freeze. The OG freeze is what people used when Birth Raid first came out and the raid took longer. This freeze is rarely used anymore. The KR freeze is a type of freeze players started to use after birth rate became easier. This is a type of freeze you will most likely encounter when you do birth rate these days. I will cover both freezes. So first let's talk about the OG freeze. You want to start slowing down when birth reaches around 170 to 160 bars of HP depending on how much DPS your party is doing. If your party is doing a lot of DPS, you may want to start slowing down earlier and vice versa. Have one DPS in your party tune the boss down to as close to 151 bars of HP as possible. Do not push past 151 bars of HP. After you get birth to 151 bars of HP, wait until birth bans skills again. When he rises, freeze him as he's falling back down before his paws hit the ground. Then, without using the skill he just banned, push him under 150 bars of HP. If you do this before the freeze runs out, you will get a long duration of time where no skills will be banned and you can just go ham. And next up, I want to talk about the KR freeze. So you want to freeze at around 170 to 180 bars of HP depending on how much DPS your party is doing. If your party is doing a lot of DPS, you can freeze earlier and vice versa. In some very rare instances, players will freeze right at the start. If you are the freezer, make sure you don't try freezing Birth when Birth is using his spike attack. He will be in hyper armor and not freeze. If you are DPS and you see that Birth is approaching 150 bars of HP and the freeze hasn't happened yet, then you may want to slow down to ensure the freezer gets their freeze in. After the boss is frozen, hit Birth until he drops under 150 bars of HP. If any skills are banned, you can use them for this freeze. 
Similar to the OG freeze, if you push him under 150 bars of HP before the freeze ends, you will get a long duration of time where no skills will be bad and you can just go ham. Freezing is important because normally after 150 bars of HP, Birth will start banning two skill tiers at a time. This can drastically slow down the run when so many skills are banned, especially if you get a Bravery and Strength skill tier ban. If you fail the freeze, you can just continue the run and just slowly work through the rest of the HP bars. If the first 150 bars of HP went badly, for example, people died due to banned skills being pressed, etc., and the freeze failed, sometimes players will choose to restart their run. For freezing, water orbs are sufficient. For the OG freeze, you can use any skill that freezes, but if the freeze skills skill tier is banned, then you cannot use it. For the KR freeze, you can use any freeze skill regardless of whether the skills skill tier is banned or not, as long as he's in an animation or using an attack. For Combat Crusader's Masterclass skill, you don't have to worry about skill bans when using that free skill. To be safe, I would recommend using water orbs and or avoid using free skills if their skill tier is banned. Also for the KR freeze, if someone in your party has the light attribute on their weapon, they can try to proc petrify on birth before the freeze. This ensures that the freeze will be successful as birth will be petrified and unable to go into hyper armor or mess up the freeze in any other way. Alright, next up let's talk about 15-6 phase 2. For this phase, you want to leave Headhunter on. You can take Headhunter off during orb phases and put it back on after the orb phase, but this is not required. I will go more in depth later. If applicable, you want to put Code of Honor on for over 150 bars of HP and then switch to Engine Cooling System for under 150 bars of HP. The boss is only debuffable during lasers and after orb phases. This means you can only toss wind orbs during these times. Also, if applicable, you may want to change and or move skills or change skill trees. This is highly class dependent and generally is done because of Birth's size and or his ability to be debuffed depending on the phase. There are two general places parties tend to stay for this phase. They will either stay at Birth's left paw or on the left side of Birth's head. Most people these days will stay near the left side of Birth's head. If your party severely lacks DPS or the DPS in your party plays a class that favors the left paw, you can stay left paw. You want to avoid the left side of the head if you lack DPS because you will get a lot of spike spawns there that will make it hard to DPS during laser attacks. The first thing I want to talk about are skill bands. The skill bands in 15-6 phase 2 are slightly different from the skill bands in the previous phase. Birth will ban the following skill tiers depending on how much HP he has. The skill tiers he bans will also be indicated at the top of the screen. If the orb is lit up, that means that skill tier is banned. If the blue orb is lit up, that means tenacity skills are banned. If the purple orb is lit up, that means strength skills are banned. And if the orange orb is lit up, that means bravery skills are banned. From 240 bars of HP to 210 bars of HP, bravery skills will be banned. From 150 bars of HP to 120 bars of HP, tenacity and strength skills will be banned. And you can only use bravery skills. From 90 bars of HP to 75 bars of HP, strength and bravery skills will be banned, which means you only can use tenacity skills. And from 30 bars of HP to 20 bars of HP, tenacity, strength, and bravery skills will be banned. If anyone in your party presses a banned skill, Birth will howl and then kill everyone. Similar to Phase 1, if you survive the attack through Broken Seal of Time, etc., you will get a silence debuff for 8 seconds. Once again, this debuff can be removed by debuff removal skills like Celestia's Zodiac, etc. You want to avoid lingering skills. If you accidentally press the ban skill after he started to declare the ban, let your party know that your skill lingered so they can press some ban skills before the inevitable howl and or the skill can get ready to block. We'll explain later. Generally, if you are less experienced, you want to try avoid casting skills that will get banned before the ban. Next, I want to talk about the laser attack. Birth has a laser attack. When he does this attack, he will lean backwards and an orb will glow on either the left side or the right side. You want to move to the other side. He will then shoot a laser. You want to move to the other side and then he will shoot another laser. When he is shooting lasers, he is debuffable. Most notably, you want to make sure someone is throwing a wind orb. Next, I want to talk about the debuff phase. A debuff phase will always follow a laser attack. During the debuff phase, if you stay on the left side, you will get one stack of the left debuff every second you stay there. If you stay on the right side, you will get one stack of the right debuff every second you stay there. While you stay on the left side, after 2 seconds, you will lose all stacks of the right debuff. While you are on the right side, after 2 seconds, you will lose all stacks of the left debuff. If you get 10 stacks of either debuff, you will explode and kill yourself and anyone nearby. TLDR, you just want to move from side to side. Things like hyper acceleration, up tenebration, stone apples, etc. can help with moving side to side. 
Avoid standing in the middle. You will get one stack of the left and right debuff at the same time and not cleans either debuff. Next up, I want to talk about the orb phase. The orb attack pattern happens roughly once every two minutes. This attack can only occur when birth has not banned any skills and it cannot happen at the same time as a laser attack. During the orb phase, the party will be split into two different rooms. Orbs will continuously spawn on both sides. The orbs will stay for about 10 seconds. Afterwards, they will explode and deal massive damage to all players on the other side. You want everyone on your side to focus on attacking one orb at a time. If you can deal DPS, you can take off Headhunter and you want to try to kill the orb before it explodes. If you don't do DPS, you want to delay the orb by hit stunning it either with commands and or skills. You can delay an orb's explosion by around 2 seconds. If your party has trouble killing orbs, you will need to rely on delaying orbs as much as possible and rely on healing. This can come in the form of your potions, healers, proccing the SD title, relying on pet encouragement, drain, anything that decreases potion cooldown, pet auto consumption, etc. As new orbs spawn, ignore the one you are hitting currently and move to hit the newly spawned one. After Birth does the orb attack pattern, he will be fatigued for a duration of time. He is debuffable during this time. Next up, I want to talk about spikes. Spikes will spawn throughout this phase. They can be killed with commands and or actives, but they are tanky. Generally, players can clear this phase without having to worry about killing spikes. Generally, the rule of thumb is if you aren't damaging the boss, try to stay away from areas where you normally stand to deal DPS. The spikes will only spawn where players are standing. If you do need to kill them for whatever reason, remember that drain is an option and you can take off headhunter to deal more damage. And finally, I want to talk about skipping skill bands, which is probably the most important aspect of this phase. Firstly, I want to talk about the Celestia skip. Having a Celestia or Seal in your party is the main way to skip skill bands. When Birth reaches an HP threshold where he is about to ban skill tiers, make sure everyone is grouped together. After Birth bans the skill tiers, wait for a swipe attack and then go ahead and press ban skills. You want to wait for him to use a swipe attack so he'll be stuck in an attack animation for a while and won't howl right away. There are two main types of swipes, one where he will swipe across the whole map with either arm and one where he will grab a platform with one hand and swipe at the other platform with the other hand. The platform grab is most ideal. When Birth gets ready to howl to kill everyone, the CL who should have the Gemini card active will use a horoscope skill, generally Zodiac, to create a Gemini symbol domain. This will block the howl and no one will die and you won't get the silence debuff. If your HP is below 50%, you will die even if the block is successful. This is why you generally want the CL in your party to host. If the CL is not hosting, sometimes, even if the block is successful, other party members might not get it. Seal can continuously block bands until you clear the skill band. If for whatever reason the seal messes up, someone isn't next to the seal, etc. and people do not get the block, stop pressing banned skills. Generally, people spam the F5 voice line to indicate that the party should not continue to try skipping. Next up, I want to talk about skipping during the debuff phase. Skipping during a debuff phase can be intimidating, but it's not too hard. Have everyone gather either on the left side of the head or the right side of the head. Follow the seal. The seal should take initiative to pick a side. Do the same steps. After the block, move to the other side and follow the steps again. The only difference is you need to move sides after each block instead of being able to stay in the same place. If people are taking a while to gather and you have too many stacks of the debuff, you can switch sides before starting to press ban skills. Next up, I want to talk about skipping during ban declaration. You can try to press ban skills when he is declaring the ban. If you cast a skill when he is declaring the ban and the skill resolves before the declaration is over, he will not howl instantly. However, if the skill does not resolve before the declaration is over, he will howl instantly. If you try to do this kind of skip, let your teammates know you pressed so they can press some ban skills before the howl and or so the seal can get ready to block. When declaring bans, Birth will rise up, cross both his hands over his face, then lower his hands and scream. He will emit yellow light. When this light is gone, the declaration is over. Most players generally try to land their main DPS skills on both the hands when they are crossed over his face. You may need to precast your skill depending on the skill or class. 
Next up, I want to talk about the SOT skip. You can also skip skill bans by relying on Broken Seal of Time, BSOT, or Benediction. SOT is rarely seen as MP is not a popular class in birth parties. This is generally only recommended for parties that have high DPS because you only get one chance and afterwards it leaves your party extremely vulnerable as you no longer have the protection from Broken Seal of Time or Benediction. To do this, you make sure everyone has Broken Seal of Time or Benediction, wait for a swipe, then press ban skills. After he howls, Broken Seal of Time or Benediction should save your party and you should stop pressing ban skills afterwards. First, I want to talk about Broken Seal of Time, also known as BSOT, though most people just call this SOT. You can cast BSOT if you have 6 characters from the 3rd path synergy. BSOT can be used by anyone. Generally, the supports will carry it. You can cast this every 30 seconds. It will grant you and nearby allies the BSOT buff. This lasts for 40 seconds. If you recast it during this time, the duration will refresh. During this buff, if you get hit with something that should kill you, you will not die. If you survive a killing blow through BSOT, you cannot get the BSOT buff again for 60 seconds. This timer is indicated by a debuff symbol. Next up, I want to talk about Benediction. People will also call this SOT. You may hear people say things like Nyx has SOT to refer to Benediction. Benediction is Nyx Pieta's masterclass skill. Generally, you just want to take stage 1. It can be cast every 13.85 seconds, and this is lower if you have any form of MC skill cooldown reduction. It will grant you and nearby allies a Benediction buff. It lasts for 30 seconds. If you recast it during this time, the duration will refresh. During this buff, if you get hit with something that should kill you, you will not die. If you survive a killing blow through Benediction, you cannot get the Benediction buff again for 50 seconds. This timer is indicated by a traces of Benediction debuff symbol. Upon cast, it accelerates the remaining cooldown of hyperactive skills and masterclass skills of all party members within range by 2 times for 5 seconds. And finally, I want to talk about Seal of Time, aka SOT. SOT is one of Mad Paradox's skills. It can be cast every 30 seconds, lower if you have any form of skill cooldown reduction. It will grant you and nearby allies the SOT buff. This lasts for 20 seconds. It's 26 seconds with Killing Blow 1 skill trait. If you recast it during this time, the duration will refresh. During this buff, if you get hit with something that should kill you, you will not die. If you survive a killing blow through SOT, you cannot get the SOT buff again for 45 seconds. This timer is indicated by a time sickness debuff symbol. Seal of Time also reduces the skill cooldown time of all party members within range upon cast. Broken Seal of Time, Benediction, and SOT do not overlap. Next up, I want to talk about the laser skip. If you get a laser attack during a skill ban, this is a great time to try to use ban skills to push to clear it. This is because a laser attack takes a long time and because he is debuffable during this attack. If you do not skip the ban, he will howl afterwards. If you do not have a seal in your party or if you do not have a lot of DPS in your party, etc., it is highly recommended to generally abide by the skill bans and wait for lasers to try skipping. People generally also do not skip during the 150 to 120 tenacity and strength skill ban because most classes are bravery skill tier focus classes and you should have enough DPS to lower Birth's HP by 30 to clear the ban without needing to use ban skills. And finally, I want to talk about when you should not skip to avoid orb phases. The orb attack pattern has roughly a 2 minute cooldown, therefore if you can clear phase 2 in roughly less than 2 minutes, you never have to worry about getting the orb pattern. However, generally due to a lot of variables in raids, you won't get this ideal situation every time. The orb attack pattern cannot happen during the laser attack, nor can it happen during skill bans. Therefore, if you cannot clear the whole phase in less than 2 minutes, you can try to transition from skill ban to skill ban during lasers. Generally, parties don't need to worry about the orb phase until they reach 90 bars of HP. If you feel your party has taken a lot of time to reach this point, instead of skipping the 90 HP ban, wait for lasers to try to skip. If you wait for lasers, you will have the whole time during the lasers try to lower the boss's HP from 9 to 30 out of the 90 band and to the 30 band. Then you would also need to wait for lasers during the 30 band so you have more time to attempt to reach 0 bars of HP out of the 30 band and to birth dying. Alright, now let's talk about 15-6 phase 3. So for this phase, you want to leave Headhunter on 
and if applicable you want to put code of honor on for over 150 bars of hp and then switch to engine cooling system for under 150 bars of hp the boss is only debuffable during lasers and after his ultimate attack and also if applicable you may want to change and or move skills or change skill trees this is highly class dependent and it's generally because of Birth's size and or his ability to be debuffed depending on the phase. For 15-6 phase 2, generally parties want to group up at this location. So if you aren't moving for the sake of avoiding an attack pattern, etc, always stay in this location. Birth will target party members and teleport towards them. If the party stays grouped in the same place, it will keep the boss in one place. Birth has a lot of attacks and attack patterns, but these are the main ones you need to be aware of. The first one is Toho. Birth will shoot out a bunch of black and white balls. You can tell he's about to do this attack when he rises up slightly and crosses his hands over his head. You cannot iframe this attack and it is generally highly recommended that you avoid it because it does a lot of damage and will debuff you as well. The light orbs will give you a debuff that reduces your attack power by 2% up to 30 stacks. The black orbs will give you a debuff that reduces your movement speed by 2% up to 30 stacks. This debuff cannot be removed by conventional means. The attack does have a cooldown, so you can't use it repeatedly. The next thing I want to talk about is the aiming shot. Birth aims at a party member and shoots three light orbs that will track them until they get hit, inflicting a stack of the light debuff, the one that reduces your attack power by 2%, on them per hit. If you play DPS, you generally never pay attention to this attack pattern because it's pretty forgettable. But if you play support, a min-max thing you can try to do is to hug the boss so that you will eat this attack pattern instead of your DPS when it does happen. You don't want to do this, however, if you are in a magical party with a CL because you will steal your DPS's Aquarius stacks. Next up, I want to talk about Triple Toho. There are two versions of Triple Toho, one when he is above 150 bars of HP and one when he is below 150 bars of HP. For the above 150 bars of HP version, the pattern looks like this and you generally want to stand at these locations in order to avoid being hit by the orbs. For the under 150 bars of HP version, the pattern looks like this and you generally want to stand at these locations in order to avoid being hit by the orbs. In general, the orbs here are a lot slower. If you are DPS, depending on how your class plays, mostly if you are more close range DPS, you can stand like this to try to get more DPS in. To comfortably DPS during Triple Toho, you most likely will need experience to get used to the timing. You also want to avoid proccing both Tohos. If Birth is in the middle of a above 150 bars of HP triple Toho attack and you are close to getting him under 150 bars of HP, do not lower his HP under 150 bars. If you do, he will switch using the under 150 bars of HP triple Toho attack in the middle of the above 150 bars of HP triple Toho attack, resulting in a predicament where you will have extreme difficulty finding a place to stay safe to avoid the orbs. The next attack I want to talk about is black and white. A yellow halo will appear behind birth and he will raise his arms and call down a black orb and a white orb. The places these orbs will land is marked by a black circle of light with a dark line coming out of the center and a white circle of light with a white line coming out of the center. If you get hit by the white orb when it falls down, any debuffs you have from the Toho attacks will be cleans and you will be immune to receiving any debuffs from Toho attacks for 20 seconds. If you have no debuffs, you can choose to not go for the white orb and spend more time hitting the boss. If you have no debuffs, you can also choose to grab the white orb regardless so you have the Toho debuff immunity for 20 seconds. 
Some players who are tanky enough will try to DPS during a Toho attack when they have the debuff immunity, but generally most players will not do this even if they have the immunity because a Toho does so much damage. If you get hit by the black orb when it falls down, you will be trapped by a black cage. You can't do anything when you are trapped by this black cage. The black cage can only be destroyed by actives and commands, and you can only damage it if you have the buff from the white orb. Generally, players will avoid grabbing this cage. If you do not grab this cage, when the attack pattern is over, the boss will restore 15 bars of HP. Generally, if birth is close to dying, someone will sacrifice themselves by grabbing the cage to ensure the boss fight ends faster. However, aside from that situation, generally you never grab the black orb during this attack pattern. As a reminder, you can still attack birth during this attack pattern. For DPS, when you are waiting for the orb to fall down, you can still try to land attacks if possible. The next thing I want to talk about is Birth's ultimate. For Birth's ultimate attack, you will go into the background where you cannot hit him and call down a black orb and a white orb. The places these orbs will land is marked by a black circle of light with a dark line coming out of the center and a white circle of light with a white line coming out of the center. You generally want one person to grab the black orb. A barrier will form around anyone who grab the black orb. If you stand in this barrier for a few seconds, you will be protected from the massive white breath attack Birth does during his ultimate. The breath attack will instantly kill anyone who is not protected from it. Everyone else in your party generally wants to avoid grabbing anything and then stay with the person who grabbed the black orb. The black orb will drain the HP of the person who grabbed it and give them potion sickness, so generally the healer in your party will grab it. After they grab the black orb, there will be 3 seconds before the cage forms around them. Generally, the healer will use a healing skill before the cage appears, so they heal while being stuck in the cage. You can also use consumables like light orbs or honey honey waffles. You can help the person who is stuck in the cage with proccing the SD title, healing them with skills if you have, light orbs, etc. If you are a healer who is new to birth rate, you can consider using a blessed Ventus's wings elixir and or hyper acceleration so you can move faster to ensure you grab the dark orb. If you grab the light orb, you will have all your debuffs cleans and you will gain debuff immunity to Toho attacks for 20 seconds. You will also not be able to be protected by the barrier the black cage forms. If you plan to grab the light orb, make sure you have a res title or res synergy, a res passive or some form of SLT or you will die. If you don't have one of the aforementioned, you generally don't want to grab the light orb. Birth will be fatigued after he does his ultimate attack, so it is not good to go into that with a lot of debuffs. After Birth finishes his ultimate attack, he will be fatigued for a certain duration of time. He will also be debuffable. The place he appears after his ultimate is always the same spot shown on the screen right now, so generally the person who grabs the black orb will stay in that position. If for whatever reason the person who grabbed the black orb can't get to that position, it's not the biggest deal, your party will just have to move to the spot where Birth is afterwards. You also want to understand what fakes are, also known as desyncs. Generally, Birth will use his black and white attack, then his ultimate, then his black and white attack, then his ultimate, etc. in a back and forth pattern. However, sometimes he will desync and use two black and white attacks in a row, then his ultimate. If you see Birth using another black and white attack and he hasn't used an ultimate yet, call out to the party that it's a fake or a desync. If a second black and white happens before an ultimate attack, do not grab the white orb unless you are able to survive it through a res title, res passive, or some form of SLT. Normally, you generally want to grab the white orb from black and white, but if you grab it during a fake, you will have the 20 seconds of immunity and not be able to be protected by the black barrier. This is optional, but it is highly recommended that someone grabs a black orb from the black and white attack and then someone also additionally grabs a black orb from the ultimate attack. Normally you don't grab the black orb from the black and white attack because you have to kill it with commands and actives which is hard, but after the breath attack the black orb will disappear, so you should grab it if possible so you can prevent the boss from healing 15 bars of HP. The next thing I want to talk about is storing skills. If you do grab the white orb during his ultimate attack and will proc a res title, passive, or some form of SOT, you can cast certain skills right before he uses the breath attack. When the boss kills you and you proc your res title, passive, SOT, etc, that skill will be stored and the rest of the skill will be cast when you are revived. This allows you to get a bit of extra DPS in because you can attack while the rest of your skill animation is playing. This generally works for skills that can be stored. Examples of skills at work include RH's second hyperactive, CC's second hyperactive, Sense's second hyperactive, etc. And next I want to talk about lasers. 
Burst is debuffable when he uses his laser attack. This is one of the best times to get DPS in. This is also an attack pattern that requires a lot of defensive capabilities because players pretty much just tank the attack in order to get DPS in. If you have anything that would help your party survive better, use it. This includes skills like Weapon Crash, Reflection, Silver Moon, Calling, etc. If your party needs it, this is where you would also want to throw Dark Orbs. If you personally are having trouble tanking this part of the raid, you need to fix your build more. More HP, Adaptation, Boss Damage Reduction, damage reduction, less polarized only if you're not DPS, etc. Consumables like honey honey waffles, giant stone apples, etc. can help, but you shouldn't need them to survive this part of the raid. When Bert's HP is above 150 bars, he will do 2 lasers, and when his HP is below 150 bars, he will do 4. If you lower his HP under 150 during a laser attack, he will do an additional 2 lasers. And finally, I want to talk about spikes. Birth will summon spikes once in a while where players stand. These spikes can only be damaged by commands and actives. Generally, players can clear birth these days without having to kill these spikes. However, if you do get a particularly annoying spike that spawns in a place that greatly hinders the party overall, you may want to communicate with your teammates to make a group effort to kill it. If you have a DPS in your party that is a good gray damage dealer, they can kill it themselves. As a reminder, it is recommended to use Drain if you have it. Also, as a reminder, if you are in serious need of killing a spike, you can take off Headhunter as well to do more damage.